This is brave. This is very brave. Hi guys. In today's video, I'm going to talk all about technique. You can use the exact same makeup products that you saw in your favorite makeup tutorial, but when you apply the products on yourself, disaster. I'm going to show you the difference between good and bad and how to get there. Hang out. Okay, I got you really close in so you can really see the difference. So we're going to use the beauty blender to apply foundation. Ooh, there's fuzz on it. We are using L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation and the difference is one is going to be way too fair for me and one is right on. So the problem is when you're fair skinned ginger, you automatically go straight to the palest color, which isn't always what's correct for you. Take the time to test out the colors or even stop by a beauty counter and get color matched. So what I'm going to do is this side of my face is going to be disaster town and this side of my face is going to be better. Okay. My face is already primed, by the way, moisturized, cleaned, primed. Let's blend it. Pounce, 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 pounce. I mean, it's true that I'm very fair skinned. I am ginge, but holy cannoli. Do you, do you see what's happening here? Girl. Like in addition to it being super duper pale, this Jenks is pink. It's very pink. Oh my God, I look like a ghost. And here's how you find your correct shade. Don't match your face. Your face is already gonna be a different shade than the rest of your body because you're washing it every day, right? You're exfoliating every day. You're wearing sunscreen. So it's not gonna get the sun that your shoulders do, right? So match it to your neck, match it to your shoulder, Oh, the difference though. Do you see that? This is a pretty good foundation too. Good drugstore alternative. If you're not into high-end foundations, not everybody is, you know? You don't have to be. It's okay. Do you see the difference? Ghost alive. Do I have bugs? That was a booger. Mistake number two is properly powdering, vice not properly powdering. So I'm gonna go with bad powdering first. Done. On the good side is I'm gonna take my damp beauty blender that I used to apply my foundation. I'm gonna dip it into the powder. I'm gonna use that to powder on. When you put powder on your skin, it sits on top of your skin if you just use a brush. When you apply powder with a damp beauty blender, you're pressing it into the skin. It's not just resting on top and giving you that powdery finish. And then further, what you can do, take your favorite setting spray. We're gonna use this Kat Von D Locket setting spray. But I'm gonna show you the difference of setting your foundation, vice not setting your foundation. I don't know if the camera's really picking it up, but there's like a serious powder cast. It's like, it's flashing back for one, and then it's like, you can just see it sitting on top of the skin. It's no bueno. So I'm gonna cover the, the bad side. I like to give it a little bit of a breeze. Didn't have my fan available. And then with my beauty sponge, Press it into the skin. Now, we're gonna go into blush. You can go way wrong with blush color. It can be far too orange, it can be like super coral, and unless you know how to apply it properly, it's gonna look crazy. Let me show you. We're gonna use this cream blush that I got in my birch box. It's a duo, so it's half cream, half powder, and this one has a little bit of a shimmer in it. I'm gonna apply it wrong. That's the point, right? I'm gonna use my finger. I'm gonna smile and put it right here. Girl, that's a lot. I'm gonna blend it in. I'm gonna use the exact same thing on the other side, but it's gonna be different, I promise. So the difference here is in the amount. This is super pigmented. It's very strong. You can't just Pa, put it on your on your face because problems. So I'm gonna take my beauty blender to blend this in, and when I hit the skin, I'm gonna like twist it, so I'm pushing it into the skin. Does that make sense? 
this is pink. This is very pink. But I'm also going to take it up onto my forehead, above my eyebrow that's not there yet, and we'll get there. Do you see the difference? Regular human, clown. We're going to take the other side, this, um, I guess it's a highlighter, or it's like a blush topper. I'm going to go into this guy, pick up a little bit of color. <laughs> wow. Now it's pink and orange with a light hand. The light hand makes all the difference, honestly. If you're like grinding stuff into your face and picking up a ton of product, what do you expect? I'm putting it everywhere that I put the other blush. Let's do eyebrows. This is Fling by MAC. We're gonna do the bad side first. Here we go. Bad eyebrows coming up. This is really hurting my feelings, you guys. Oh my God. Okay, number one, it's far too long. Do you see how far this is coming down? No, girl. Also, it looks like punctuation. It looks like, like an apostrophe. If you're a beginner with placing your eyebrow, use your pencil as your guide. Your whole face is a map. So. From your nose, across your pupil, that is your arch. You can just roll it up and it draws a little dot. See the dot that I put there? You might not, it looks like a freckle, I'm full of freckles. The start of your eyebrow, line up your pencil with your nose in the inner corner of your eye, you see, dot. And then the end of it, nose, outer corner of your eye, dot. And you can find the bottom of your natural brow because there's going to be hairs there. Mine are see-through. That's okay. Okay, so you go from the bottom of this one to the dot. Got that? Then from this dot to this dot. Now, if you can still see the dot, like maybe you want a little ham on the dot placement, just take a Q-tip and you can erase it. Easy as pie. Okay, then you fill in the top. So you're just going parallel to the line that you've already drawn. Go a little bit past the dot so you have some room and you're gonna connect it. See that? You've drawn on an eyebrow. Then you just fill it in with little strokes and then we're going to go back in with a spoolie and blend. And when you blend, you want to blend up. And then here you take it and drag. Do you see the difference? Regular human shaped eyebrow. I don't, I don't even know what that is. It's about to get worse. Let's go into the eyes. We're going to do a smoky eye. Okay. You can go really left with a smoky eye, big time. Here's number one mistake with smoky eye is not building up color and not blending. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go right in with a smoky color. I'm gonna go right in with this, these two. Smoke, right? I mean, you want gray and you want black. That makes sense, does it? Panda, this, this is a problem. The shadow, because it was not properly laid down, has skipped and has applied very unevenly. Okay, so on the good side, we're gonna build up the color. You start in the crease with a warm transition shade that matches your skin tone, maybe a couple shades darker. And I'm pulling the color down into the center of my lid towards the lashes. Then I'm taking a clean brush and blending that. Now here's the secret to a good smoky eye that it's not gonna look crazy like this. I'm gonna take like a super duper, the warmest color in the palette. This good old burnt shade is called Extra Bitter, like me. I'm gonna dab the brush into it just like just a little bit, 
And I'm going to take that into the crease, low in the crease. Don't go super high. Do you see what's happening? And then with a clean brush, again, the name of the game here is blending. When you're using dark shadows, it's not a fast process. It's just not. I'm going to take a flat shader brush and I'm going to grab that same smoky color that I used on the bad side. I'm staying low on the lid and then I'm going to run it along the bottom line and we're blending, we're blending, we're blending. Okay, now we're going to grab this good old brush and take the black. We're staying close to that lash line. Now I'm going to take another dip into that smokier shade and I'm going to use that to grab the black and pull it in and they're all going to become friends with that warm color. You should be blending until until you're mad about it honestly. It takes a long time to blend. It just does. See? Gross. Better. Very carefully darken that line. I realize now that I skipped concealer, it's over. Let's just, let's just let it go. Now let's talk about eyeliner. Okay, so with the smoky eye look, coal liner, thumbs up. That's a good choice. So in the bad side, I'm gonna show you how bad it can get. Whoa. So herein lies the problem. You want to define your lower line and it's a smoky eye look, so it would make sense to darken it in this way. But when you don't put any on your waterline and there's nothing going on up top, you've just really called a lot of attention to this bottom line for why, for, for why. That's not the look we're going for. Let's show you the better way. We're gonna tight line. Tight lining is when you apply to the waterline of the upper lid. And the way you do that, you can take your beauty blender to help you so you don't rub off the, your, the color of your shadow. Hold your lid. It's really uncomfortable. It takes a lot of time to get used to, so if it feels crazy and your eye will not let you do it clamp shut, it's okay, it's normal. Keep trying, you'll get better at it, but it takes a while. Do you see the difference? You're getting your, the intended effect here, which is to make your eye color and the white of your eye really stand out because the contrast. Here, mm -mm. let's just be nice and say that that's just not, that's just not what you're gonna get. It's not the effect at all that you're gonna get. Let's do mascara. With the bad, with the bad side, we're gonna just, when you have blonde eyelashes, like I do, you gotta really work to get that mascara in there. Do you see? You can see my blonde roots. Can you see? You can see these blonde eyelashes popping through. It's not good. It's not good. So here's what we're gonna do for the good side. I've already done a lot of the work by tight lining here. I'm gonna lean my head back so you can see my boogers. That's always good. When the wand gets to the base of the lashes, you wiggle. When you wiggle, you're pushing the product down towards the root. So you're really getting it on there. The other thing that we did not do on this eye that we're gonna do on this eye right now is we're gonna highlight the inner corner. So even when you're doing a smoky eye, you should highlight the, your inner corner. And you can use a Q-tip to do this if you don't have a, a pencil brush. So I'm just dipping into the lightest shadow in the palette and kind of twisting it into the shadow. And I'm gonna go into this inner corner and just tap it. I'm not getting onto the waterline. And when we say inner corner, we don't mean like the pink inside of your eye. Leave that alone. We mean this, this part right here. There's like a little indentation. Do you see the difference? It's very subtle. And you can make it as crazy as you want to be. Like you can use a glitter, you can use a shimmer. This is like a satin shadow, but it just is bringing light to that inner corner. So this, no bueno, stop. This, better. Okay, last we're gonna go on to lips. So I'm gonna take a wipe and just wipe off 
this extra foundation and powder that I have grossly let sit during this entire tutorial. We're gonna go with a more neutral lip. And on the bad side, we're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna put it on in there. It's not terrible, but it could be so much better. Lip liner. I'm not blessed with big lips. I got little ones. So if I want to define them a little more, I have to use pencil. I mean, this is NYX natural. So it's close to, you know, natural skin tone. But what I'm going to do is in the way that I'm shading, create shadows that make it's going to look, you'll see, you'll see. Okay. You can already see before I even put the lip color on the difference. These lips look bigger because I've created a shadow in the corner and I've given them a little more definition and I haven't even really overdrawn them that much. But geez, gosh, look at the difference. So I'm going to apply the lipstick. So what's happening is the light is catching these edges and making, making the lip look bigger and more like turned out. It's giving you more of this. You know what I'm saying? All right, you guys, here's the difference between disaster and good. Using the same products, technique is everything and it takes practice. Practice makes perfect. I, there's always something to learn. There's always something to try. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to look crazy. It happens. All right, this is it. I cannot wait to go wash this off my face. I look like a lunatic. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Who cares? No one cares. Can't. Can't even. I can't talk today. <sighs>